Church Facebook family, praise the Lord, TVC family. Come on, let's put our hands together. So good morning, everyone, and good morning to our Facebook family. Welcome, and thank you for joining us this morning. I am Elder Tara Alexander, and I am so honored to welcome you to our service today. It is not by accident that you have tuned in to our service, so we believe that there is a word for you in this worship experience this morning. We believe that God is doing amazing things here at TVC, where our motto is, we are a church that is word-fed and spirit-led. So I am excited, and thank you again so much for joining with us. It is you, Sunday. I don't know about y'all, but I'm so happy to see the youth up here this morning. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, let's invite God just to do what he needs to do in our lives this morning. Amen. Put our hands together for our youth. Good morning, church. If you know the words, you can sing with us, please. Yeah. Every prayer 
is to our God. Everywhere to worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise, is to our God. Every praise, every praise, is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Today, I will be reading the Old Testament, 1 John 1 through 4. That which, for, that which was from the beginning, which we, ha we have heard, which we have seen in our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life that appeared, we have seen it, and testified it and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was the father and has appeared to us we proclaim to you that we have seen and heard so that we also may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the father and the son and his son jesus christ we write this to make our joy complete Good morning, Javine. Good morning. 
I'll be reading James 1. I'll be reading James 1, 6 through 9. <clears throat> but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. But the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wild flower. I read James 1, 6 through 10. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, please bow your heads and close your eyes for the prayer. Heavenly Father, I come before you. Thank you for waking me up this morning to embrace the sunlight that shoots down from the heavens. Thank you for giving me the health and strength I need to overcome every stronghold in my life and for loving me unconditionally in the times where I may fail. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Don't do before Shanae comes. But praise the Lord. Lord. Y'all may be seated. Um, I gotta do something real quickly. Have to do this. Okay. Back. Wanna thank everybody for coming out. And all you on Facebook land, appreciate you tuning in today. Um, this is a wonderful day. If I would can get to one amen. amen. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking around because maybe this ain't a wonderful day for you, but it's it's a wonderful day. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> maybe it's just me feeling that way. It's a it's a beautiful day. The sun is shining, and it's not too cool outside, not too hot outside. It's a good day. Amen. Two amen on that one. <laughs> maybe maybe I might get to the place where I can get a whole amen. Amen. All right. It's good to have fun in church on, on, on a Sunday. You know, last week we had a great time in, on Easter Sunday. And just, just, it was just, I'm telling you, I have folks that called me up and said, that was a great message. I'm like, you know, part of it is like, okay, well, I preach every Sunday. It's going to be a good message every Sunday. <laughs> but anyway, I want to do this real quickly. Um, this Wednesday is Ministrator Assistant Day. And... Um, I'm not going to be on the Zoom to do this. I want to do it in person. Come on down, ministry assistant. Amen. Amen. I have one of the best ministry assistants on this side of heaven. That's what she told me to say. <laughs> but she is really good. Um, she gets on us when we don't tell her what did we, we're going and all the other stuff. She said, I can't keep you straight if I don't know to keep you straight. So um, I get corrected, we get corrected, but um, there's one of us get corrected more than others. <laughs> she, she don't even, she, so, but on the behalf of the of the mama and papa, Bishop and Overseer and the True Vine Church, it's a little, there's a little gift for y'all. Now, I want to recognize somebody. His birthday is past. His birthday just passed. And I don't often get a chance to, you know, y'all always see us kidding back and forth because we're, we're good friends. But today I want to be serious and to recognize my, my good friend, Pastor Jeff Davis Bell. Come on out here, sir. Yeah. He just had a birthday. He he turned 21 again 15 times. But I, I don't I don't often say this publicly, but I won't say it publicly today. I appreciate our come on up, man. Come on, Pop. Just, uh, you know, did y'all hear the knee cracking? <laughs> I don't often get a chance to say this publicly, but he always y'all hear me cracking jokes on him because I, I had the mic. 
But when he's not on the mic, he cracked jokes back. So, but I want to let him know today publicly, yeah, you <laughs> don't look all innocent. <laughs> that publicly, I, I, my wife and I truly appreciate, I know that's your pastor. <laughs> But we want to recognize you publicly for all the work you do behind the scenes. Um, you just make things easier for us. So it's a little something, something from the men's department and from the church. And uh, just to recognize. All right, man. He, he worth it. We, we keep him around this a little longer. A little longer. <laughs> but anyway. Um, Uh, Sinead now, right? Okay. Oh, you got the little ones. Come on, Sinead. Are you going to stand right there? Okay. Hey, Nay Nay. Good morning, True Vine. Good morning. All right. This morning we have Ayana and Jariah here to help us with Kingman, Kingdom Investment. What, what time is it? Awesome. Awesome. If you need an envelope, um, please raise your hand and the uh, one of the ushers will bring one to you. We have the ways to give here at True Vine. You can give by Cash App and it's a dollar sign True Vine SA. <clears throat> we have PayPal. It's PayPal, PayPal.com me forward slash true vine church sa of course you can give by mail 1357 rice road and also by texting tvc to 54244 that was texting tvc to 54244 amen amen, amen. if you are ready you can please stand amen. and face their outer walls and you'll pass them, you'll just pass them to the to the to the outer walls. Walk that way. No matter what I have to do, I need you more. Chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, I need you more and more. Awesome. So, Father God, we thank you for today, God. We thank you for the ones that were able to give, God, and the ones that were not able to give, God. We ask that you just bless us right now, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for overflow right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. My needs are met. My needs are met. I'm out of debt. I'm out of debt. I'm more in store. I have more in store. For the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God. Amen. Thank you. We have Jariah, she's gonna be introducing the speaker for today. Right. One, two, three. Hey, look at me. Four, five, six. I got a good, good mix. Seven, eight, nine. It's Easter time. Here's Big Ten. You can do it again. All right. All right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay. She, she get you. Was that was that her Easter speech? That was her Easter speech. Oh, okay. Well, she said she didn't get to do for Easter, so she did it now. <laughs> Come on, Jariah. Well, well, let me get you. Let me ready before I come up here. I didn't get a chance to read it. Okay. All right, where'd Jariah go to? Thank you, Jariah. 
He said, four, five, six, do well, whatever. I, I, I didn't learn the speech, so I can't do it. So but she did a great job. Great job. Amen. Amen. I'm going to introduce the speaker. <laughs> it's a woman that needs no introduction, but she's a dynamic woman of God. Now, this morning um, in the men's, I'm going to share a little bit what we talked about, about being um, voluntary, voluntold, and delegation. All right. Okay. And we found out that voluntary and voluntold actually kind of go together. And those of us who are, who are married longer than yesterday understand what it means to be voluntold. You do whatever she said do, you just do it. We, we, we don't often get a chance to be delegated. There's a fine line, there's a fine line between being voluntold and being delegated. Sometimes they sound alike. One gives you an option, <laughs> the other doesn't. I'm let you all figure out which one that is. But in my household, I get voluntold a lot, a lot. And, and I know how to respond. Right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, I just do it. That's how, that's how, that's how you do it. A happy life is, a happy wife is a... Well, see why all the brothers seem to know that the women, y'all act like y'all know with nothing. No, we, we when when our wives are happy, we happy. And when the wives are unhappy, we leave the really we leave the room. We leave the room. We leave. The, we leave. We we was that um was was that um <laughs> he said I just stayed left. Oh man, mm. I, I got rid of the house. I kept the dog. I'm good. <laughs> was that oh Southwest? Don't you are free to leave the country. <laughs> but she is a wonderful person. Um, she is the woman that makes my liver quiver and my spleen. <laughs> Brother Jolte, come on. He got it. He got it. But one of the things I can say, and y'all know, she is a praying woman. And when you can get up at 4 35 o'clock to, just to pray, Er, when you say early morning and, and, and she does not count in robbery to do this. And she prays for each of you when you do, when you don't even know you're being prayed for. And that's a, for you, for me, that's the joy of having a praying woman in the house. Not that I can't pray. I pray when I get up. I pray when I get up a couple hours later. <laughs> It ain't 430 and it's not five o'clock. It's a little later than that. And so when you have a partner that knows how to pray, there's a level of comfort that goes with that, that connection with each other and a connection with God. In a few short days, we're going to be celebrating Pentecost with the coming of the Holy Spirit into Christendom, if you will. When you live with Pentecost every day, it's a joy. Now, my understanding, y'all talked about the Holy Spirit today. And I heard y'all clap. That means she did a good job. When you got somebody that, that is driven and led by the Holy Spirit, has passion for God's people, passion for the things of God, life is so much sweeter. And my joy is complete because I'm saved. Saved and saved. You know why I know I'm saved? Because if I wasn't, she'd take care of that for me. <laughs> so without further ado, the, the, the youth pray team is going to sing. And after the praise team, you'll hear from the overseer, Emma Marie Coleman Alexander. I gave her the Coleman. I gave her the, I put a Coleman in there. That don't come to all of them. So I put it in there. Hmm. Hallelujah belongs to 
My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. 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 My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to My hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. 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 All of the glory. All of the glory belongs to. The glory, all of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory, Lord, all of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory, all of the glory belongs to you.
watching, go ahead and clap for the children. Tell them, praise God. Go ahead. Keep on going on. We deserve to praise God. Amen. On this Youth Sunday, we are so excited. I want to do a quick announcement before I go into the word on today. We are so honored. We have one of our own. Listen to this. That is a part of the 110 National Qualifiers. This is a part of the Texas Alpha Premier volleyball team. Come on, Sister Jade. Jade, wave your hand, wave your hand, wave your hand. If you have not seen her on the post on her mom's page, Dr. Doshi Piper, that girl can serve. Yes. I used to play volleyball and it's not easy to serve overhand and make it in. Oh, she's doing awesome. So we want to support them on Sunday, May the 1st. They are having a barbecue. Please support our players' efforts to qualify for the national bid by making a purchase. It is be hosted by the Manual Tree Service, Augie Animal, Al Alamo, excuse me, I said Animal, Augie Alamo City Barbecue, and if you're watching, please forgive me, Integrity Roofing and Siding, Honey Badger, Honey Badger Barbecue Shack, and Texas A&D Transitioning. April, I mean, May the 1st, Tickets are $10, includes two meats, three sides. You can cash app, and we will put this on our page and give you more information about it. But let's clap for Jade as their team is going to be competing. Jade, beautiful. Congratulations to you, young lady. Amen. Praise God. There's the tickets right there. Praise God. We praise God for everyone that's here in the sanctuary and those who are watching us. Uh, we are so grateful that you have um, joined in with us today. I tell you, God is just awesome. He is so mighty good. And those who are not with us today, we're praying for you. We are lifting you up. We're praying for Brother um, Vaughn. He was not feeling well, praying that God that restore his healing in his body, that his air will flow in the name of Jesus. We continue to pray for those who are out and traveling. I want you to know that we are praying for you. And if those, if you put, if you need prayer while we're going through the day um, and we're doing the message, please say that we'll put prayer in and then someone will respond back to you, whatever that prayer request may be. We thank God for you. But if you have your word, let's go to Ephesians chapter one. Um, before I go any further, we want to say praise God for the set man of this house, our own overseer, our own bishop. Come on, let's say bishop. Let's clap for our bishop. Amen. Let's do that one more time. Our bishop, he's, he's overseeing me. Let's do that one more time. Let's do that one more time. Let's clap for our bishop. He oversees under overseer. That sounds a little bit better. Hello. I picked it up. I, I, I know how to work that. Yes, I do. Amen. You know, we wise women. We, yeah, we do delegate. We do know how to, how the bishop was introducing me. Yes, praise God. But we praise God for the man of God that said, man of this house, we do honor you, man of God. We do not take you for granted and for all our elders and our ministers and deacons and our disciples here that are true vine and those who are getting ready to go through our orientation and baptism and our newcomers class. We are so excited that you're going to be a part of this family. And if you wanted to be a part of this family, as you're watching, just go ahead and put that in the group and will somebody will get with you. Ephesians chapter one three through 14. But before I go any further, this, we, this weekend, we just celebrated my daughter's birthday. Um, Tara, our oldest one, she, we just clap for her. We, we just clapping for people today. <laughs> And the thing about it, we, we thank God for Tara, Tasha, and Tanya. Um, I'm going to say they were good. Bishop, I would say they're his, but I thank God for our girls. You know, and I, I think it was like the last time I spoke, I, I thank God for our, our son, Joshua. Joshua would have been 32 this year. So I'm so thankful. 33, 33, 33. Yeah, because you're 32, 33. And we, um, next year, we're going to do our first memorial. I've come to the place where I can now say, I want to do that. So, you know, we always talk about him and we celebrate my girls help me to, we always um, remember his birthday, but it's just something about that. I'm so proud of our, our girls, Tara, Tasha and Tara, they're, Tanya, they're here with us today. Um, I thank God for my mother and father. My mother's already going to be with the Lord. My dad's 91 and I'm going somewhere with this. He lives in California and he calls, um, my sister called and had my dad call and sing happy birthday 
to my daughter. My, my father sings happy birthday to everybody. And you feel special when you hear my dad sing. I tell you, my dad does not like to talk on the telephone. If he talks, he talks about one minute or two at the most. For him to call and say happy birthday and sing, you just feel so mighty special. And I want you today to know today, before I get into this, you do not, might not realize who you are and you may not feel special, but I want you to know today, even before we start this message, even if you have not felt special by your parents or your mom and dad, that you are, you are extremely special in the eyes of God. Amen. So let me pray and then we read our scripture. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for our time coming. We thank you for our young people. We thank you how you're blessing our children, our youth, God, to know you in a real way. We thank you that you're building up their confidence, God, as they stand before a crowd and as they play, as they do certain different things in the community, in the church, in their homes, God, we thank you as you continue to bless them. Bless those all that are watching, God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable. God in thy sight. You are a strength and you are a redeemer. Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Have your way on today. We surrender our will that yours shall be accomplished. Let all God's people say amen, amen. and amen. Bless the Lord. Ask the Lord. Go ahead and sit down. You guys can go sit down. I'll read the scriptures while you're sitting because I had you stand for a little bit as I was talking. But I am coming from Ephesians chapter one, verses three through 14. I want you to feel extremely special in the eyes of God. My, my text for tonight, for today, is going to be talking about chosen in Christ. Everybody say chosen, chosen. in Christ. All right. The scripture reads, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, and then I'll share one from out of the um, Amplified. All praises to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do. And he gave it him. It gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. Amen. We just celebrated that on last week. Thank you, Jesus. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ which is to fulfill his own good plan. And this is the plan at the right time. He will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God for he chose us in advance and he makes us everything work out according to his plans. I'm going somewhere. Hold on, hold on. God's purpose was that we Jews were who were the first to trust in God in Christ would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believe in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised long ago. The spirit of God's guidance that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did so when he did so. So we would praise and glorify him. Amen. Amen. So let's say this one more time. Chosen in Christ. Those who are online, go ahead and text in there. Go right and write chosen. If you're taking notes, go ahead and write chosen. We are chosen in Christ. Come on, let's begin to flood the, the line that's going on. Four times in the past, there's a reverence to God having a plan for us. So you're not just wandering haphazardly and you don't know what you're doing. Ask God. He has chosen us. He predestined us. He purposed us. And we were able, we were also chosen. Four times we were given his plan for us to be holy and to blameless in his sight to be adopted as his sons through sons and daughters through Jesus Christ to make him known the mystery of his will that we might 
B, for the praise of his glory. We were created to worship him, to give him praise, to give him glory. Amen. He chose us. We were chosen. He has a plan for us. I'm going to keep bringing this in until you feel this thing. We know what it means to be chosen as children. We were chosen to be on a team. We were chosen to participate in a school play or we were chosen to be in a spelling bee. Later, we were chosen to be someone's boyfriend or girlfriend. We were chosen to be a speaker at the graduation or chosen to be in a social club. Uh, then as adults, we were chosen to be a marriage companion or we were chosen to be a partner in business or chosen to lead in the organization. But sometimes when you're chosen, sometimes you always don't have a good effect. Sometimes you're chosen on a, a team and you find out you're the last person to be chosen. You don't like that feeling. Have anybody ever been there? Okay. All of those. Yeah. What do you say? But you've been chosen. Huh? You're the last, and you know, that's what I put there. And you're the last one to be chosen. You feel a little bit, some kind of way. It's like, come on, pick me, pick me. I know how to hit the ball, you know, but all of these have their place, but none of them compared to being chosen by God to bring him glory and praise chosen. You have been chosen before the foundation of the world. You are the elect of God because before the foundation of the world, God had for knowledge of who you were and his knowledge. He knew your strengths. Jade, he knew that you could hit that ball over that thing, that you make a difference. She's a young lady that has confidence in her ability. And as we're training our children and our youth, when they stand up or when they do anything, you do it with excellence. Amen. And we as women and men of God and as adults, we have to exemplify that when we're standing up, that we have confidence and excellence in who God is, that he has an anointed us and appointed us to do what he's called us because we are chosen by him. Amen. Amen. God had foreknowledge of who you were. And in his knowledge, he knew your strengths, your weaknesses, the ups and the downs, your tendencies and your habits. So it's not a surprise to God when he sees what the things that we go through. Before the foreknowledge of God knew everything. Everybody say everything. Everything, Woo! everything about us. Everything we would do, what we would think, what we consider, even every temptation. He knew all of it. And he still said, I choose you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about you. That makes me feel mighty good. Yeah. I come to encourage somebody today. You need to hold your head up. God chose you. You didn't choose him. And he saw you're worthy. Yeah. I have elected you. So that means that God has not elected us on our goodness, but on the goodness of God. He knew you before the new was even existing. He knew you. He had knowledge of you. The Amplified Bible says, just as in his love, he chose us in Christ, actually selected us for himself as his own before the foundation of the world so that we would be holy, that is consecrated, set apart for him, purpose driven and blameless in his sight in love. Mm. Foreknew you. He foreknew you. He chose to and to sanctify you through the work of the Spirit. Sanctifying means the washing, the cleansing, progress, progressively getting stronger and mature and better in Christ. I'm going to say that one more time. I don't know if you heard me. Through the spirit. Thank you there. Sanctify means the washing, the cleansing progressively. I'm not staying stagnant. And if I feel stagnant, God help me to move progressively getting stronger and mature and better in him would be obedient to Jesus Christ. God chose you. Not a real call on the votes have to take place. They don't have to check the ballots to see if somebody stuffed them. But no, he chose you. Before I chose him, he called you by name. Before I called his name, he called my name. By the foreknowledge of the Father, by the work of the Holy Spirit. When I didn't know that there was a spirit that could wash me and cleanse me with the word of God and help me to be obedient and conform to that which Jesus Christ has set as a model for us before the foundation of the world. God chose me. He chose you. Point to yourself. Say, I'm chosen. I'm oh, if you don't feel good about yourself, you need to feel good. And I said this, I say, whoa, God. Wow. He chose you. 
We are God's imminent choice. Yeah, I don't forget that. I remember saying that. You are his favorite choice. Sometimes people don't teach, treat you like you're their favorite choice. People on your jobs will look all around you and talk about it and talk about everybody else. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. And they would not even mention your name, but God chose you. You're his favorite. You're his best choice. You're the top choice. And he didn't hide you. Isn't that something? Oh, I'm talking to somebody up in here today. Whew. Love it. He said, you are mine and I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, I'm going to keep ringing it to you. Get it. I have been personally chosen and you are a representative of Jesus Christ. Jesus calls all his disciples, all of his followers, all who say they have been saved, all who say they love him to be actively involved in sharing the message and salvation with others. Let me remind you of the great commission, the final command Jesus gave us before he ascended into heaven. Um, in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples to all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you and be sure I am with you always, even to the end of the age. It's wonderful that our young people are, are representing today. Riley, Lisa, I encourage you today that you can aim to whatever you want to do. As you're standing here and singing and you're in school, believe God for greater. Whatever you want, the sky's the limit. You can do it. I don't care what people say at school or even around you, knowing that God has chosen you and has a plan for you. Amen. Come on, let's clap for our people, for our young people. Joseph, I'm just calling out a few young people because they're going to get me and I'll call their names. You know, God has started something. They're thinking about our children, our little ones. I'm looking here, the, the Adairs, the Forums, the Jades, I'm trying to pronounce her last name and I don't want to mess it up. Gibble, thank you. And Joseph and some of our young people that are not here, um, that we want you to know that we love you and you're chosen. Adults, I want you to know that we love you and that you're chosen. Why am I ringing on this? I don't know, but the Holy Spirit, someone needed to know that you love today. I want you to hold your head up and know and say it with pride that I'm chosen. Ooh. Do you ever speak about how good the father loves you? Do you share the love of Jesus with others? This is your personal thing. And you may be saying yes or no. I'm, and you got a little fear. Ask God to help you. Do you allow the Holy Spirit to use the gifts and talents that God has given you? Are you teaching others what it is to be a follower of Christ? Aspire to have a character that is Christ-like, the fruit of the spirits. We need to have love, joy, peace. Long suffering, the virtues of praise. We want godly character. We are not perfect. No, we're not. So don't pretend you're perfect and try to tell people they got to be perfect. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, He will help us. He will lead us. He will guide us. Amen. So don't make things to be that you're holier than thou, that knowing that you can't ever reach it. Make sure that people know it's attainable through Christ. Amen. Oh, I'm just talking today. I'm going to encourage you. We are chosen. May each of us be enabled by the Holy Spirit to share the truth of the gospel with others. Be concerned about ourselves and others in our own community. And we are part of a beloved community of believers. Bishop talks about the beloved community all the time, but we are part of beloved community. We are a part of the body of Christ. We have a purpose and we are strong enough to take responsibility for the well-being of others to the extent that we have an opportunity to share what God has given us. Amen. Amen. Share how God has helped you in your relationships. Share how God has helped you to learn how to relate to your children when you couldn't relate to them before. As to, to, tell, show, tell somebody how God is bringing restoration, that he has recuperated your marriage. He's put a flame back where it's beginning to be stale. God can make you have some excitement in the midst of things that were dead. He will resurrect the things that need to be resurrected. Oh, I don't know about you, but I thank him. I thank him because I'm chosen by him and because he loves us he helps us he'll help us as men and women of to be men and women of integrity and what it means to be holy that we'll hear the word that we'll make better choices whatever that may be and we want to stand strong for the lord i was thinking tumbleweeds i don't know what movie was watching i think it was um we watch a lot of disney where the girl has a different color hair and is singing with us and has that tumbleweeds tanya 
Troll, that's it, the troll. See, someone knew what it was. Yes, yes, see? Yes, help me preach, help me preach. Tumbleweeds, tumbleweeds. Did you know that tumbleweeds only put down one root? And that root is very shallow. Tumbleweeds are easily uprooted when the wind blows. Soon the tumbleweed is blowing wherever the wind pushes it without any sense of direction or stability. An oak, on the other hand, puts down lots of roots and the roots go deep. Even during strong winds, oaks stand firm because their root structure is strong and deep. My question to you today, is your spiritual life more like a tumbleweed or like an oak tree? Whew. I have been reading in this book, Living with the Advantage by Bishop Carletta J. Vaughn. And one of the chapters called Dimension, she talks about the Holy Spirit to give us, helps us to give depth, width, height, and length. And after I share that, I'll be finished. The depth of it is the profound wisdom of God that no creature can phantom. The height is beyond the reach of any enemy that will try to de deprive us of it. The height is the realm of principalities and wicked and spiritual wickedness. Spiritual wickedness exists, exists in high places, but the height of our love of God far surpasses any interference with spiritual weaknesses and power. God's original intent was to establish a place in us in him that no one can take away because of the width, the length, the depth, and the height. No witch, no warlock can destroy us. God's plan is that we are filled with all that we need, the length, the width, and the depth, and the height. Ephesians 3 and 16 says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Say your inner man man. Woo. The riches of his glory that your inner man through the Holy Spirit would be strong and powerful. But if you fail to pursue the riches, you would not have all that the father wants you to have and experience. We must have a thirst, a thirst, a thirst. Go ahead and if you're in there, go ahead and say our thirst. Go ahead and say we need a thirst, a personal thirst for all that is available. Something that says, I want more. I want the more of God. I want the more of being used of God. I want the more of a feeling of the Holy Spirit to be full and overflowing. Just like in a relationship, you always say, I want more. I want more of your time. I want you to call me more. I want you to pay more attention to me. I want you to do this for me. You know that? In the natural, but think in the spiritual realm. I want the more of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 3 and 18 says, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and how high and deep is the love of Christ. The Lord loves us so much. And because he loves us, he wants us to have the fullness of him. Length is stated, the ability to expand your vision, what you hear and your ability to know the follow and follow the voice of God. How long can you endure? How long can you go through the rough patches of your life? Your length can be measured in time. Your length gives you the ability to stay the course. How long is the question most believers ask? You must have length to do to the finish line of your faith. In this, you allow the Holy Spirit that will give you the advantage over, weary, over weariness and fainting. So you ask the Holy Spirit, be with me. Give me strength as I'm going through. Help me not to be weary and well-doing. But in due time, you, the scripture says you shall reap if you what? Faint not. Width and length are powerful together. The Holy Spirit wants you to have width, which means greatness, bigness, the capacity to do great things. But length gives you an advantage over time and time timing. The Holy Spirit will give you to endure the weeks, the years of waiting on your manifestation. It's nothing like when you're going through and you have to wait on something. The Holy Spirit would encourage you to lift you up and keep continuing to believe and to trust God to increase my faith in my unbelief. Help me, God, in the midst as I'm walking. Amen. It is here that you develop patience and in your patience, you possess your faith. Dreams don't die, but dreamers quit. If you want victory over your quitting, if you want victory over your complaining and frustration of your season of manifestation, come on now. The dimension of lift will give you your advantage over quitting and walking away from dreams and visions. 
Length is the dimension that gives you the victory over time. The dimension of death must be pursued. Death, D-E-P-T-H, is what gives you life, the quality and intensity. Quality is better than quantity. Do y'all believe that? Yeah. All right. Okay. Sometimes we got to re-examine what we're producing. I'm talking about us personally. What are we producing? Can it take an inspection? Can a quality control come in the job of the Holy Spirit and check us? Your products, your life, your character, your vision is not only the only one, but your uniqueness of what you bring to the earth has been inspected by the Holy Spirit and it will not fizzle or fail under pressure. This is depth, the root in your life. You got to go deep and you got want to use your mind. You got to be willing to go deep. The roots go deep into the soil where nutrition and hydration occur. You're not going to be flimsy or, fla- or faltering under the storms of life because your roots are deep. You have the dimensions of width. You have the dimensions of length. Now God finally wants to put you on display on the shelf for others to see. All right. The weightiness of who he is in you has been created. Listen to this by the repetitive review and reexamination. So sometimes you go through and you don't get it right. You have, may have to go through something again. Oh, I didn't get this right. I was complaining. Oh, I talked about this. Oh, I murmured. God helped me to go back through. And I think about what Bishop said on last week, go into the room. I was telling people you need to go in the dark room because you need to be processed. Hallelujah. Sometimes we need to be um, just processed to mature, to grow. And as we're going through that, we become stronger and we mature maturing God and we be more like Christ. Ooh, this was good to me as I was putting it together. I don't know about you, but that's okay. God, when God finally puts you on display on the shelf for others to see the weightiness of who he is in you has been created by repetitive review and examination. You have been in the room. You will not come out half done. Death takes time. Pursue it with your entire mind and all your strength. You say, no, I don't want to have to go through stuff. Oh, I don't want that. You know what? You want to be mighty in God. You always say, I want to be used by God. God, I know you have great things for me. So sometimes you may have to go through some stuff. All right. Shallow doesn't shallowness does not last. Remember that tumbleweed, the wind just blows. Are you shallow? Are you that tumbleweed? Are you that, that tree that is anchored? Death is developed through, listen to this, suffering and persecution. Think about COVID, all the things that we went through. We have been through this stuff. Death is delivered only to those who have done, have gone through painful seasons without complaining. I don't know where you fit in there. Everyone goes through painful seasons, but not everyone goes without complaining. When you understand the depth, the dimension is only developed in seasons of agony, abandonment, rejection. You'll stop complaining and say, oh, this is depth. This is what I need. Wow, God. <laughs> You'll change your attitude and welcome it. The last thing you want to be is shallow. All right. You'll stop complaining about how people treat you. You'll stop complaining about people say about you because you are developing depth and your roots are going deep and you'll come to a place of satisfaction that whatever you endure is going to be worth it. Settle in your mind and in your heart. You want to go high. You need width, length, and depth. And with the advantage of the Holy Spirit gives us sometimes over ourselves, because sometimes we are our worst enemies as we're going through and walking through things. Not every enemy is external. Height reveals that we ourselves and our lust and our pride can be our worst enemies in this thing that we're doing, whether we will ever combat. Did y'all hear that? All right. In height, discernment must operate at this level. The level is not given to the unskilled. This level is given to those who have been perfected in the word, in their faith, and in their character. We need maturity in the room. And I put that down again, Bishop Alexander. Preach last Sunday, being in the room. God wants you to be deliberately and intentionally working on yourself. You hold no grudges now, and you have no emotional issues with anyone, and you can work in love with everyone. I'm going to say that one more time. You hold no grudges. You have no emotional issues with anyone. You can work in love with everyone. (laughs) I'm going to say that one more time. You hold no grudges now. You have no emotional 
emotional issues with anyone, you can work in love with everyone. Your childhood problems have been resolved. You are not touchy and easily angered. Your temperament has been mastered and your uh, liabilities are under control. This is when height has opened up in you. We are chosen in Christ. We are chosen. We are chosen. We are God's people. And it's all because of Jesus Christ. Because he loves us. And I'm closing with this. John 10 and 10. I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. There is nothing better. You are chosen. You are chosen. You are chosen. You are chosen. So I just want you to know you were chosen. And God loves you. Let's let our light shine. I remember growing up, one of my first scriptures I ever learned in, in we call it children's church or the youth. Uh, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. We will be getting our Sunday school back together pretty soon in person. We do it on Zoom, but continue to pray for our children as we instill the scriptures. And as we if you want to master the things in your life, can't nobody stop you but you. You thirst for that. You desire to read the Bible more. You read and ask God to give you revelation knowledge. Amen. Let's clap for our bishop as he comes. You be encouraged because you're chosen. Amen. You may be seated. She been in the room. She been in the room. <laughs> she got processed. She was she was not in a dark room though. She was no. She been in the room. Been in the room. Yes, yes, you know, yes. one of the things she was speaking about the trees. I'm gonna put another tree. It's called a redwood in California. Yeah. Not only do they go deep, but they go across, and they interlock with other trees. And so when one gets nurtured, they all get nurtured. So even though we're chosen, we're chosen to be part of something and not to be from, we're from to be. So we're from something to be in something. And so we are not lone strangers or lone rangers, if you follow, follow the, the cowboys. Uh, I like watching westerns. Right, Sean? He, 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 don't, he sit down, watch 30 minutes and leave. I'm trying to teach him something. He need, he, need, he need to stay in the room a little longer. But, but when, you, when, you, when you, the other thing about being chosen, you're not a hired gun to fight somebody else's fight. You're there to fight God's fight. Yes. Now, what you just said at the end, I'm not sure if we get it. Because once I'm chosen for God and fighting for God, I'm not fighting for myself. So I don't have any personal, personal grudges. <laughs> I don't have to take out any contracts. I don't have to chop anybody in the throat. <laughs> We're fighting the fight for the Lord. I love the commercial with Charles Barkley when he's, he, he's been chosen. I love that commercial. He gets happy because somebody chose him. Y'all know the commercial? I, what, 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 I don't even know the product. What's the product? Okay. That, what now? Subway. Subway? Is it Subway? I don't know. It's interesting. When you can know the commercial but don't know the product, the, the commercial failed. It fails. Because if he doesn't point you back to the product, it failed. So I know the commercial, but I don't know the product. So they got to go back to the drawer board. But he was just happy to be chosen. And we should be just as happy to be chosen. I'm, I'll close out with this. You talk about the death. The word for glory in Hebrew is called kabat. And that means the weight. Well, to carry God's weight and to get his glory you got to go through some stuff. And after you have suffered a while, after you have been through some stuff, he has strengthened you and established you. So being chosen is wonderful. But know you're chosen to, for a good fight.
must fight a good fight. Right? And you, they, see, everybody don't know what it's like to grow up in, with six brothers or five brothers. It's a, it's a, sometimes you got to fight to get to the table. They don't know. <laughs> and, there's all, and there's, well, there's one piece of chicken. <laughs> and all five, all six of y'all want that piece of chicken. Whoever gets there first gets the chicken. And everybody else is mad. Am I right? Mm -hmm. I know. But the one with the chicken, very rarely does he break it off. So everybody can... Mm. You just get happy because you get first. One of the things that I love about the Lord is that he get there first and you learn how to share. Well, that was deep. Y'all missed it. You learn how to share so everybody can be nurtured. So because I'm chosen, I'm chosen. I'm not chosen to be selfish. I'm chosen to be selfless. All right, I'm moving on. That was that was that was so profound. That was profound. Y'all didn't know it's profound. That's how deep, that's how deeply profound it was. Now I gotta say this, uh, Sean's Sean's dad, my brother. When my dad would come in with his, with a soda, and it was back this time, it's just my, myself, his dad, and my sister, and he had to pour each out into the class evenly. And he get to mine, he pour it out. And he pour out, then he take a sip of everybody's glass. I said, but you you got more than everybody else. He said, no, your part was on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I get that when you get home. I used to I used to buy into that till I got older. I said, that joke. <laughs> he don't trick me. So now well, after he started pouring, and I think my I, I snatched my own glass. Because that way he can't sip it. It's because my power's on the bottom. We got to be careful of the tricks of the enemy. Yeah. Got to be careful of the tricks of the enemy. Make you think you're so, you're so chosen that you don't have to be part of anything. Oh, uh-huh. You just wonder where I'm going with that, would you? <laughs> All right, let's <clears throat> let us stand to our feet and then we go home. Any special? Oh, the women are ministering at the summit at six o'clock tomorrow. Pretty soon we're gonna go right across the street. They can, okay, we have they're building another location right over there, right by um, the um, the AME Church. So Dr. Doshi Piper is coming on. <laughs> I was going to let Bishop announce it, but on Tuesday, we are, I'm organizing a prayer vigil for Melissa Lucio, who is scheduled to be executed on Wednesday. Um, new evidence has merged. Um, first of all, there's a Hulu documentary on her for you to learn more about her case. She has 14 children. One of them died as a toddler and she was convicted for that child's death. It has been proven that she did not kill her child. And I just want to stand in solidarity with her before this happens. Hopefully the state of Texas will see, be just and do just justice and be merciful. Um, but if they don't, you know, I, I just want to just be in solidarity with her and let her know and everybody else know that she's in our prayers and we value her life, her humanity, her dignity and her personhood. Um, Tuesday, 7 p.m. at UIW's clock tower. UIW's clock tower is right by the administration building. Thank you. Amen. Yeah, see, this is this. Is the, I like these call to action. It's one thing to talk about it. Now I've got to do something about it. All right, the, uh, let me pray, and then we will. I just got kicked out of the youth praise team. Yes. All right. For those listening here and those on the virtual page, we we have we talked about be part of joining on but first we got to get you part of the salvation plan 
the ABCD. This is Jariah ABCD. <laughs> A, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. B, believe that he died on the cross for our sins. C, confess our sins. And D, become a disciple. That's how easy it is. And I believe that God made it so easy. Chose, gave us a plan. Now we got to choose, choose that plan and walk with that plan. Amen. So if you're here and you want to uh, hear today or listening on the virtual platform and you want to say, I want the Lord to be my personal savior and to confess our sins, put something in the comment box and the virtual pastors, directors, whatever title we gave them, will contact you. <laughs> Amen. If you want to become a disciple, put something into the comment box. If you hear this, raise your hand and Dr. Doshi Piper will get hold of you. We good? Anybody in Facebook? If you, I can't see you, so um, just put it in the comment and somebody will respond. So let us pray. Gracious, loving God, we are thankful for this opportunity once again uh, to be <laughs> sit at your feet, to have feasted off your menu. You gave us so many nuggets today, fed our souls, inspired us to do better, called us to action. Now help us to respond accordingly. As we are your children, your disciples, trying to fulfill the great commission to go ye therefore and to teach and to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Help us word our mouth. Give us a confidence in our ability that you've already placed in us. To be your hands, your voice, your feet. To carry the good news wherever we go. And as missionaries of the vision says, our mission field is wherever we are. So we don't have to have a title to be missionaries. All we have to have is you in our hearts and to understand that we've been chosen for such a time as this. And today we give you glory and we give you praise in Jesus name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And we sing, Amen, Amen, Amen. And we sing, Amen, Amen, Amen. The the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And we sing, Amen, Amen, Amen. And 
we sing amen 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 you are free to go in jesus name